All right. Here I'm is. Here I'm is. Make sure my volume's all the way up. Yep. Okay. Mmm. <coughs> <coughs> little bit of the after effects. I'm going to let everybody get in here. I got a lot to talk about today. Um, as a lot of you know. Chris, Jason, yes, it's old JC back in the saddle again. I'll go ahead and start on some of this. I guess uh, first First of all, I would like to thank um, Malcolm Tent for filling in for me last week when I was under the weather. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I got me a nice little souvenir from that sickness. Right there. Oh, yeah. Just as I'm getting better. Preparing for a week of work. Uh, early Sunday morning, we get a, a phone call about my my granddaughter, Winter. And uh, her mom is in the uh, ER over at Gastonia. Gastonia is only 20 minutes away from Charlotte. So I was driving, you know. But, um, uh, about three hours later, I get a hysterical call from my daughter saying that winter's having to be airlifted from Gastonia to Charlotte. Uh, her, her mom and dad are not allowed to be in the helicopter. They all got COVID, all of all three of them. It must have been a matter of uh, weight distribution. <clears throat> is all I can figure out. Um, I'm, I, I'm not going to play punches here, man. I, uh, Sunday, uh, for a little bit there, I, I thought we were going to lose her. No. Nah. I guess I made uh, a few posts, you know, telling what was going on, and I'm overwhelmed at the uh, the outpouring of uh, support um, prayers, thoughts, everything. I think I told y'all before, man. I ain't, I ain't one of these people that you know. I'm not. Uh, when you say prayer, I, it's not like a vampire in sunlight. I'm not. Like, ah! You know, it's like, if that's what you got to give, man, give. Bring it on. We can use it. And uh, had some really, really great people um, calling me, you know, through every form of uh, communications that we have today. Uh, text, email, messenger. Phone call, and man, it, it's not a burden. It's just, it's really nice to know that whenever uh, you hit some dark times, that you have uh, the community. Like, as a matter of fact, on on the kids' uh, GoFundMe post that uh, Carrie's mom restarted, because you know Jake's out of work now. He's been out of work for I don't know how long. And we'll be out of work until the 20th. And maybe even beyond that. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, but um, they're in a little bit of a bind right now. And uh, and some people some people today have made some wonderful contributions. I, I don't like to, you know, pull people out and single them out. But my, my buddy... Uh, Rick Johnson made an incredibly, incredibly uh, wonderful donation to him. And uh, 
I will be appreciative of that uh, for the rest of my life. But uh, every little bit helps them. And, uh, you know, just because uh, one is more than the other don't mean one's more important. So uh, anything you can do to help them, please, please do. And uh, I got some things here I'm going to talk about. Uh, maybe some things that we'll, we will contribute uh, to that. Matter of fact, um, at the shows two weeks ago, a buddy of mine, uh, J.D. Morrow, Walks up to me in Spartanburg and hands me this. Do you guys know what that is? That's that's the uh, overage of the EP royalty LP. And as you know, man, these overages are very, very rare. I can't... I'm going to try to get through this tape and describe this to you. These things sold quickly, I might add, for $100 a piece. Now, there's not going to be any more made. They're <coughs> Once we make them, they're, made, they're done. You know, they're, they're not going to be made again. Let's see, there were 15 of these. This is number 10 of 15. And it comes with a wonderful silk screen cover featuring my friend Janice Blythe on the front. See, look at that wonderful stuff there. It comes with an EP Royalty tote bag. Now, I'll go ahead and open it for you. Yeah. Comes with a 8x10 of the EP Royalty lineup performing live in Albemarle, North Carolina. Comes with an unused EP Royalty rare bluish green record cover. This is from the original printing, or the second printing, but the original second printing, not a reissue. And this is the stock we used. And a certificate of authenticity of everything. Well, like I said, these started at a hundred bucks, so that means uh, I won't be taking less than. But JD, uh, before this ever, before these problems ever came up, said he would like to uh, whatever this record, uh, whatever this record uh, brings in, he would like to donate. Uh, the proceeds to Winter, my little granddaughter, and uh, I thought that was really nice. And I, I got more stuff around here that we'll, we'll be doing that with um, soon. But uh, thanks to everybody who's been checking up on her, and uh, I'm gonna keep you posted. Uh, I got a picture bright and early this morning from her mom and little winter was on there and she bright eyed and smiling so i and i took that as she felt better they're out of uh the icu unit but one thing i hate about all this uh covid precautions and stuff is you know wait we can't even we can't even see them. If there was ever a time when a daughter needed her father, it was the other night when I got that uh, phone call. But they ain't having it. They know better than we do. But yeah, I got really sick. Uh, it wasn't COVID. I took one of the at-home COVID tests. And it came up negative. But I was sick as a damn dog. And you can all thank Miss Clayton for taking care of old JC this week. 
Man, she has been my Foxy Florence Nightingale. Oh, I can't. Uh, it's hard for me to put into words what she does for me and what it means to me. You know, she does it because she wants me to be around for a while. And, uh, yeah, I just love her so much. And, uh, and I'm on the mend. I've been at work, working full days. Got a little bit of a cough left over, but that's about it, you know. But, uh, I mean, I, as you probably figure, I don't have a whole lot planned out today, but, uh, we all want you around, and I appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to be with you, with you guys a little longer, too. Um, those of you waiting on the Southern Hostility Demos overage package, I'll show you. I, man, these, I didn't even get to talk about these on Break On Through. They were sold out pretty much immediately. Look at that. That's a beautiful cover right there, huh? See, I still got to bend that up. and I still got some things coming in that are going to go with the package. It's probably, we're still looking at about another week or so. <coughs> but uh, we'll get those to you. Had to change brands of hibiscus tea this week. I'm not extremely pleased with that. Uh, tastes good. I just like that bright red, you know. But, uh, there is some. There are some things I'd like to talk about. Um, while I was sick, you know, especially late at night, I I get in some conversations with a bunch of you guys. Uh, some of them go for quite a bit. Some of them are just you know here and there, bam, we're done. But uh, it's uh, I watched a whole lot of. Uh, 70s and 80s horror movies uh, while I was uh, down and out. Man, I, I, I got, I missed, I was sick on Labor Day. I was sick the day after Labor Day, which meant I couldn't go to work, which meant I didn't get paid for Labor Day. So, and then I was sick another day. I think I only worked two days that week. <coughs> but, uh, I, I I had a conversation with one fella in particular. Um, what the hell? You know what? I'm going to go ahead and say, that Derek, Derek Jones, I'm going to say it was you, man. Because you made me think about some stuff. Derek was basically just thanking me for signing the... Now Derek brought a big stack of stuff, you know, to the shows and uh, thanking me profusely for signing them. And, I, and I'm just like, you, you know, you're you're very welcome, but you gotta understand something. That's that's this band's policy. Um, he said, you know, he's writing me. He says, um, I've done this with other bands and sometimes they act put out and sometimes they act uh, like you know they just don't have time for it now I think we all know just basic uh, basic manners there is a right and wrong way to do stuff if you see a guy from a band you like and he's out having dinner with his family that's that's not a good time to approach for I mean I don't know why you'd be carrying around a bunch of records 
But uh, that's not a good time. And I'm going to tell you something. This has happened to, to us many, many, many times. <coughs> but you guys, you guys know how long we we stick around after we're done more than not, more times than not. And the merch stand is the last thing to go. So, uh, but unfortunately, and you guys have seen the old war trunk, man. We've had it since 93, the big silver trunk. It's got to go in the van. Uh, it's got to be one of the first things in because it goes on the floor. And I've seen people sit there and watch us sit there all night long. Watch us pack that damn thing up, drag it outside, load it into the van, put everything on top of it, and then come out there, hey, man, uh, I wanted to get a shirt. Waving a $20 bill. You, you, see, now, that's an asshole move right there. And if you get treated shitty, you kind of deserve that, you know? Wait till everything's packed up in the van and everyone's sitting in their seat, ready to go, pull out. And then you, oh, 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 oh. Because you were too busy drinking beer and stuff. Well, see, you can wave that $20 bill around, but I'm, I'm going to tell you this. At that point, those t-shirts aren't $20 anymore. Because if we got to stop and unload that van again, uh, we're talking, that t-shirt is now $100. So, there's that. And I understand if you were a person that brought a bunch of records to somebody and you caught them in that, uh, at that time, you know, then, yeah, you, you're probably going to get, um, treated badly but uh and then and listen i understand i mean okay i always think about when i heard a story about dickie betts one time telling someone that he, he would only sign two things you had and he's really poking hard to make sure you weren't someone that was going to sell them on ebay i mean what, what what does it matter at that point but uh but yeah, I mean, Dicky Betts probably can't sign 200 records for people before he goes on or after they're done, you know, and stuff like that. But uh, but here's the way I see it: whatever you bought, and you bring to that show wherever we're at, we have time. I mean, if we don't have time, we'll let you know. We we ain't going to be around. As soon as we're done, we're gone. Man, we got we to gotta hit the road, and that has been the case many times. But, well, man, we, we sign everything you bring. That's a, that's a policy. You, you bought it, you bring it, we're signing it. Because... When, a, when someone tells you, when someone acts like you're just putting them out, I even heard a lot of those black metal bands used to, you know, really get in their fans' faces or tear up their fans' records and stuff when they ask them to sign them. I'm going to tell you something right now. If I bought something, asked someone to sign it, and they tore it up, oh, yeah. They're going to be walking around there with a jack jaw. I don't give a fuck who you are or what kind of music you play. Here, so uh, people to say that they think they're better than you, and they think their time is more important than your time. You know what I think about? I think about when when I get up at four o'clock in the morning and get ready to go to work. And why do I go to work? I go to work to have a steady flow of income. And uh, the income, it's for bills, utilities, 
food, gas, and hopefully there's some left, some frivolous crap like you see behind me. <clears throat> that just brings joy to me for some reason. Well, see, I think about you having to do that too. And with all the choices of things out there that you could spend your money on. Maybe things you should spend your money on. You buy my shit. And, uh, what, I don't have time to sign it when you come to a show with it? It's never going to be the case with us, so... Really, need no need to discuss it much further, really. But I just... The way some some artists treat their audiences is just appalling to me. And the fact that they still have audiences to treat badly is... Uh, is amazing to me. I understand someone like Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger can't sit around and sign stuff for people. He'd be there six months. And everyone's got a story. And, you know, like he, he wouldn't even make the next three shows. But... But at other times, it, it's it's understandable. I mean, you can you can make time. This ain't no sinking ship. This ain't no sinking ship. You're sitting there right now going, damn, Jeff Clayton, why do you keep telling us it ain't a sinking ship? First of all, you ain't even on a ship. This is a seven inch hand laved record. It's square, it's clear. There is a program on both sides. These are made by hand. We have one coming out really soon. I think maybe Malcolm said six weeks. But we're doing a pre-order on them. There will only be 50 This ain't no sinking ship EP. There will only be 50 of them. And at last report, when I was talking to the minister last, he gave me the number of what has sold. And we are very, very close to the stopping point. How do I get one, Jeff Clayton? You got to tell me something. Well, you have to contact Malcolm 10. Malcolm is brokering this whole thing. I, I'm taking care of the covers. Me and Phil Keller did the covers and getting them printed down here. But the records and all will be sent to Newtown, Connecticut. And that's where they will ship out of. All, all the ones that sold of the 50 will ship out on the same day. And uh, all I know is at this point, if you want one, like if you were like after the show, if you're gonna go visit Malcolm and, and get one, you really need to contact him first to find out if there's even enough left to sell. Fifty is not very many. These overruns where I only have fifteen of them, and I, I sell these before. I sell them in less than 24 hours. I mean, 15. There's 15. But of this, there will be 50. The cover is super bad. I think you guys will like it. And, uh, 
You can see it on Malcolm's uh, last week's Tent Tent Talk Tent Talks Tunes. Maybe it wasn't last week. Maybe it was a week. No, it was the same week he covered for me. But uh, he even talked about it on Break On Through. But uh, yeah, last week. But uh, we got that uh, going. And I'm going to go ahead and lay this on you right now. I've been in constant talks with TKO Records. The very last bit. Is being put on live from quarantine to Halloween in quarantine. 500. 500 made. And because it sold out in record time. Live from quarantine, the original number one is being reissued in a another uh, edition of 300. <coughs> What's Randy going to do with the vinyl this time? I don't know. But I do know for quarantine two, we're talking about doing a candy corn colored vinyl. Of white, yellow, orange mix. It's going to be great, man. It's going to be wonderful. If you enjoyed Quarantine 1, you are going to definitely enjoy Quarantine 2. The back cover has been altered on Quarantine 1 because we don't include the DVD credit. Because uh, we will not feature a DVD this time. But it will feature a full color poster. Not available with the first go around of print. So yeah. We're hoping that before Halloween. <coughs> we're going to have this ready. I, I, if I'm being 100% honest with you, I have a feeling it might be slightly after Halloween. Yes. Brad Mullins, I'll see you on here. You know what? Brad Mullins sent me something the other day. And it's right over here. I'm going to step right over here and get it. I will be back in a moment. Since we're all in a helping mood... Brad uh, sent me an artifact from Anti-Scene History of Old. And he says, hey man, I, I got this from either you or Joe. And I'm looking at it and I said, Dad, that was Joe's. It's not the skull shirt that you used to see him in. But this was one that he definitely wore and if I'm able to find a picture, I will accompany the, it with the picture. But Brad says, hey man, take some bids on this Joe Young worn t-shirt. It's a large. It's old. And if I had to put money on it, I would say that that is no longer a large. I would say it was more like a medium. Maybe a slightly bigger medium. Get one more look at that. Yep. 
previously owned by Joe Young. Brad says, hey man, you know, take some offers on this, highest offer, take the highest offer, and uh, send some money out there in California to Janice. So, uh, that's what we'll do. We'll send some money out there to Janice Blythe. If you want this Joe Young worn t-shirt. Well, let's see what time it is. Man, I've only been on 35 minutes. And uh, if there's anything you guys want to talk about for about 10 minutes, shoot me a question up there real quick. See if I can talk about something. Man, I, I swear, you know, uh, two weeks ago when I came on here and I was wiped out, about to fall asleep, sleep deprived, the fact that you guys tuned in the next week to see that I wasn't even there is a miracle. Because I don't know, man. Sometimes I think I'm I'm just running out of steam for this. But then you know, something happens and we, uh, we find something to talk about. And, of course, locations of shows later this year. Okay. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good topic. Um, October 22nd, we are scheduled to be with the Queen City Rejects at uh, Freeman's Pub in Gastonia, North Carolina. Just right down the street from Little Winter's House. We will be playing with Queen City Rejects. One of the area's best, in my opinion. Okay, so, you know, if you want to come out and see them, you know we're the area's best. So that's a that's a done deal right there. October 22nd. There's another date we have for November. It has not been 100% confirmed yet, but it is. With a national headliner. And of course, when it is confirmed, I will... I will bring that up, okay? But I can't right now because uh, I can't have a bunch of rumor floating around if it's not confirmed. And then uh, all we got left is December back at the Tipsy Borough for the annual Christmas show. Uh, we're thinking the date on that is something like December 17th. I could be wrong, but I think uh, this Saturday near that weekend. Uh, oh, by the way, the thing about November, that's any anti-scene members that listen to this, that's going to be news to them too. So, yeah, we'll discuss that uh, soon you saw mad brother ward put up a new blog if you haven't seen that go check it out it's on the anti scene page it's on his page the blog page jeff are you a fan of mst3k i don't even know what the hell that is MST3K? Mm. Y'all gotta understand, see now... Uh, I can't even read this stuff because I can't go backwards, it's too far away. Oh, Mystery Science Theater! You know, I used to like Mystery Science Theater, but I, I would rather watch those movies without their commentary. It, it was only funny for a minute, for, to me. I like watching the movies. I, I was watching some Paul Nashy, uh Wolf, werewolf movies this this past week, and uh, 
Man, those are some great, there's this some great stuff. Great stuff. How good was Playboy Buddy Rose? I mean, is good even the word you should use there? Aren't you looking for the word fantastic? Are those hand laid record stereo mono? That is a good question. One I do not have the answer to. Maybe uh, Malcolm Tent will chime in on here and answer your question for you. Maybe he'll bring it up. Oh, boy. Maybe he'll bring it up tomorrow on uh, Tent Talks Tunes at 7 p.m. Bobby G's been here with us the whole time. Bobby G just put out two fantastic Joe Buck Yourself LPs. And uh, if y'all don't have one or both of them yet, you need to contact Bobby G. And remedy that ASAP. <coughs> Somebody just asked, what was my top ten? What was my top ten or top five? 70s horror stuff. Man, I you know, I, God, I don't know, man, because uh, if you say one of my top 10 favorite 70s movies, well, one of them goes to 68, but the rest of them end in 73. It's all 5-8 movies, man. Bam. But, you know, then you start talking about the Hammer movies. Then you start talking about the AIP and, uh, and some of the even smaller companies than that. You know, some of that stuff is just my favorite shit, man. It's like um, I finally got to watch Beyond the Living Dead the other night, and I want me to tell you why I, I wanted to watch that, because um, I remember being I don't know, man. Uh, I guess I had to be at least five years old or less, and my parents along with uh, some more of their friends and all, would go to the drive-in theater sometime. And, you know, I'm sure that what they were watching uh, was of no interest to me at that time. I don't think they were watching anything X-rated, but uh, now if I'd have looked up and saw that, I think I'd have remembered that. But uh, I do remember the trailers, and uh, I just remember seeing the trailers uh I must have been older. I must have been older than five, because I remember seeing the trailer to uh, the House of Dark Shadows that scared the hell out of me. And uh, and I also remember when uh, I saw a trailer for Beyond the Living Dead, and man, it creeped me the fuck out. And uh, I never saw the movie. Never saw the movie ever until this past week. And as soon as I started playing it. Just from the scenery of the cemetery, I was like, this is the damn movie that I saw. I knew it was called Beyond the Living Dead, but how many Beyond the Living Deads could there be at this point? Right? But uh, as soon as it, in its first, in its first five or ten minutes, I was like, this is the one, man. I can just, I can tell by that setting of that cemetery. And uh, it was. Didn't freak me out. But uh, it was all right. I can see seeing it as a young kid would have been a little much. So yeah, review. Courtesy of J.D. Morrow. One EP royalty overrun. Starts at $100. If you care to pay more, you want to make sure you get it, Message me on my page, not the anti scene page, not on Instagram. On my page, message me. Courtesy of Brad Mons, a Joe Young previously owned t shirt. Highest bidder by Friday. Gets the t shirt, money goes. To Miss Janice Blythe out in Palm Springs, California. 
there you go. Um, I don't know if you saw my Facebook page before uh, you came on, but, you know, a great mail day is a great mail day is a great mail day. And I had a great mail day. Look at this. Made in Hawaii by Jeff Daw on LP. Now, I was lucky to get one of the um, CDs he put out, what, I guess, at this point, what, two years ago? I don't see Jeff on here today, but the, at least a year ago. Oh, I bet it's two. And Electric Junk, also on vinyl and on orange vinyl. <coughs> they know old JC loves orange. Orange vinyl. Trent McNeil, previous former bass player of Anti Scene, says, Clayton, I know where your love of orange comes from. It's uh, from you from you going to uh, see the Baltimore Orioles uh, World Series in 1970. He goes, that's what it is, man. He very well may be right. But, uh... I don't know. I feel like I've really asked a lot of you today. And, uh, you know, anything you can contribute to the kids GoFundMe will help in ways that you will not believe. I mean, a lot of their medical expenses are covered. But, um, like at the end of September, they were scheduled to take winter to get her operation for her cochlear ear implant but she won't be able to do that now since she's been sick and uh i don't know how i haven't talked to carrie today so i don't know if there's been a rescheduled date or what has to happen for that but uh, when they go they have to get a place to stay the whole night they may be there a week you know they got to get their their meals and uh the gas up there and back so you know any of this covering for the time that Jake's been out of work and uh, um, you know, will help this month and, and down the road when they have to go get this surgery. And uh, I know I've been a little low key today and uh, hopefully you all understand. I mean, this weekend, <laughs> this weekend, uh, really put us through the ringer emotionally and I think many times emotional stress can be a lot worse than uh, physical ailments and uh, I wrote in one of my posts that uh, for all the bad and everything that's wrong with social media, I think we here have a strong little community. And when people are hurting or in need, we we answer the call. And uh, if that's what uh, being in this band for almost 40 years means in the end then yeah I'm, I'm a very wealthy man no matter what you say no matter what you do You all know there's going to be the day when you have to just eventually give in and break on through. <laughs>